Hi, and welcome to our short introduction to motion capture, where we go through some basics and afterwards some examples of motion capture systems. I try to give a broad overview of what systems exist and how they differ. But first of all, a short introduction to myself. My name is Ben Fischer. I completed my Bachelor of Media Engineering at the University of Applied Science in Düsseldorf. And right now I'm working on my master degree in media informatics. And since 2017, I'm working with motion capture in context of my employment at workgroup Merivi, which is part of the university. And during that, I led multiple motion capture sessions from dance sessions to motion studies and experienced different kinds of motion capture systems and learned how they function. The presentation is split in two parts. The first one is about the basics of motion capture, where I go into what is motion capture and uh, the different tracking techno technologies. And the second part is the showcase of motion capture systems we have here in the studio. Motion capture, or mocap for short, is the process of recording the movement of objects or people and using that information to animate digital character models in 2D or 3D computer animations. So you take real movement and use some kind of sensor to transform movement into data a computer can understand. And the computer calculates position and rotation values out of it and calculates a skeleton which you can use to animate a character. So you take real movement, digitize it, and the computer gives you a skeleton, which you can use to animate basically whatever you want. And that is used in different kind of ways. The most obvious one is Hollywood, where movies try to use unreal characters, which don't really exist, like robots or aliens, which should you, uh, move like a normal human. Or they try to expand on characters like an ape, which you can't really record facial movements, but you want to make it speak. So you expand on the movement you normally can have. And they animate the characters with the, they try to animate the characters with really realistic animations. And so they use body tracking, face capture, or finger tracking, and combine it all together to try to get the most realistic look they can have. And it's basically one of the origins of motion capture. And it is a big part in further development of motion capture. Another use case is medicine or motion analysis, or even research, where you use it for gait analysis, or try to find errors in movements, or and, tr and you try to optimize it, or to, you, to prevent injuries, uh, to try to recover faster, or even to analyze how an artificial limb has to look like so you move correctly with it. And it's also used in professional sports. Basically, in each of the uh, professional sports it is used, like for analyzing how the near-perfect motion is, how you can learn from it, or how you can optimize it, and to simulate what is possible with movement so you can try to further the movement of the athlete. Another use case is robotics, where you try to control the robots with your movements, uh, with intuitive mov movements, or you simulate human movements because humans have developed to have efficient movements, so the robots could mirror it, or to make uh, robots more likable to us humans because we know how they should, uh, we know how m humans move, and if uh, robots move like us, they are more likable. And you can also use it to extend the human body, for example, with exoskeletons, and have intuitive controls, and it reacts to the body. Another big part is art and performances, which sometimes emphasizes human motions or even disguises human mo motions, but it still looks highly organic because it's an organic motion it's based on. And it's always either you try to expand the body or you disguise it. And it's always the combination with technology, with dancing or movements, which gives the performance something special. 
Also, you can use it to have a reactive exhibition. For example, you go into a room and the room reacts to what you are doing in it. And it can uh, control the lighting or it speaks to you. And even though you don't really do anything, you go into the room, the room knows where you are and reacts to you. And the last one of the use cases is live applications or live interactions, live virtual reality, and where you can control with your body something you want to play or interact with. And it gives the application an immersion you basically can't have without being tracked like you are because you use your real body in an application. So basically the four big uses are for human refer references, for analyzing the motion, for intuitive control, or to have a higher sense of immersion inside an application. Tracking systems can be categorized into three different systems. Inside-out tracking, inside-in, and outside-in tracking. They all differ in where the sensor and the reference is placed. The reference is a trackable position, like a marker, the body itself, the sound, a reflector, or just a color. The sensor tracks the trackable reference. Inside-out tracking is when the sensor is placed on the body and the reference is in the environment. This allows for an absolute position tracking because the position can be calculated in relation to the area around and everything is relative to the environment. Examples for that is camera tracking where the camera is placed on the body and it searches for trackable references in the environment like markers or high contrast points. It allows for quite a precise tracking, but waits a lot, does need computational power, and has problems with occlusion. Electromagnetic tracking is another example, which is cheap and precise, but has problems with fast movements, and also when there's metal in the scene, they can occur errors. Inside-in tracking is only relative tracking, because the sensor and the reference is on the body, so the tracking data is only relative towards itself. If you move around in the area, the movement is only estimated. Examples for that is mechanical tracking, for example, in robotics and in medicine, which is very fast and very precise, but waits a lot, blocks movement, and it comes with a high effort to put in place and with a high price. IMU sensors, which are velocity sensors and gyroscope in one, are very precise and very small sensors, but they tend to drift, which means they make small errors in the tracking, and since it's relative tracking, they can't correct themselves, and the small errors add up from time to time, and the longer the tracking goes on, the, gr uh, the error grows and grows. Outside in tracking, is when the sensor is in the environment and the reference is on the body, and it uh, is also absolute position tracking like the first one. For example, marker tracking, like you can see in the top picture, it gives good sampling rate, very precise tracking, and doesn't need too much computational resources, but come with a high price, occlusion problems, and you always need a marker or a marker suit. Other examples are color camera tracking or depth image tracking, where you don't need markers or marker suits, so there's no limitation on the body and also no setup for the actor. But also there are occlusion problems. You don't get the same uh, frames per seconds like the marker tracking, and it's more computational intensive than the marker tracking. Another example is acoustic tracking, which works with one speaker and three micros, so it works only with time of flight. It's very cheap and there are no mechanical parts, but it's also the, mo uh, the least precise and also comes with a low sampling rate. If you take a look on these three categories, um, for body tracking, we tend to not use inside-out tracking because it's only practical for low number of objects. And if you want to track each movement a body can make, you need more points of tracking. 
So the most uh, body tracking systems work with inside in tracking, which gives you good relative position and few movement limitations, or with an outside in tracking, which is a very good absolute tracking, and you can track very many actors at once. We are now in part two, where we take a quick look at four different kind of mockup systems. The first one is the Azure Connect. It's a quite cheap solution for an easy body tracking, and it nearly needs no time to set up. Then we test the capability of CapTree, a quite new markerless mocap system, and it only uses color cameras to track the body. And before we present Perception Neuron, our typical IMU system. Last but not least, we take a look at a high-end solution. For that, we use OptiTrack, which allows a very good marker-based tracking. All the systems I explain in a similar structure. First, I go through some system information for each and every system and what setup is required. Then I show the software by tracking Charlotte and talk about the positives and negatives while she dances in the background so the tracking results can be viewed at the same time. In the end, I explain other functions of the tracking system and under what circumstances you should and shouldn't use it. The first system we take a look at is the Azure Connect, which is basically one uh, sensor unit, and it uses a depth image camera to track the body. It is an outside in tracking, but because it is basically just one unit, it could also be mounted on a robot or so and used as an inside out tracking. There is basically no real setup required, it's just place the unit in front of the PC, connect it to the PC, and the tracking works and just a few data before we go into uh, the tracking. The, it's up to 30 frames per second and has a precision up to 10 millimeters, but mostly it's around 20 to 30. And it comes with a quite high latency of 130 milliseconds and a range up to six meters from the sensor. But the, the, all this is not too impressive, but it's a quite cheap device with only 410 euros. And it can track basically up to 12 persons, but because it only has a range of six meters, it's quite limited how many you can fit into the area. So we take a look at the sensors. You can see here the information the camera tracks on the Upper left side, there is the infrared camera. On the right side, the depth image. And down there, the color image. And it uses an artificial intelligence to combine all the data it can collect into uh, skeleton data it can put out. So it gathers all the information from where is the person and tries to combine it into information you could animate a person from. All that you can see in the 3D view where the person is located. And to see the real tracking data and the skeleton, we have to uh, switch this uh, software in a bit. But first of all, we show one problem of the device. Because it's only one unit, you get a infrared shadow behind the person. So all the black area behind Charlotte is basically where nothing can be tracked. So here I could be tracked, but if I stand behind her, everything in that area is basically not recognized by the camera. That is because the camera is only this one unit and it only uh, shoots out infrared uh, informations to one side and doesn't get what's behind another person. So now we switch the software and I can show you the body tracking. And now we 
are in Unity where we can see a visualization of the character and the motion. And you already can see that the motions are quite shaky. And that is because the tracking is so unprecise. But it's a quite fast and a quite easy setup if you want easy body tracking. So there are strengths and negatives for the system. A very positive thing is that you basically need no setup and you basically can walk in and it starts to track. You don't need a suit or any markers on your body. And that is not only for the actor, but anybody can walk into that space and can be tracked. So if I just go to Charlotte, I should be tracked as a second person and I'm here. Without any markers on me, I just walk in and it starts tracking. Uh, a few negatives are, for example, interactions with persons are very shaky. And if you walk behind persons, the tracking stops and it starts again because there is the infrared shadow behind her. And also movements near the, uh, near the floor are very critical. So if she curls up into a ball, the tracking gets very bad and it's very shaky and it doesn't know what to do with the legs because it doesn't get enough information for the tracking. But the most, uh, a very positive thing for it is that the price is very low. So you don't need much to start an easy body tracking. But an obviously uh, negative part is that there is the infrared shadow. There are problems with occlusion and with reflections in the scene and the delay is quite high. So if you want to use that system for motion tracking and use, for example, virtual real reality with it, you don't really get a feeling for your body because the body lags behind, behind your real movements. Also, it has sometimes problems with uh, black clothing or black skin even. So the tracking gets worse depending on what the person we wears. And so not everyone is tracked equally. Other functions I can't show you today are, for example, rudimentary finger tracking or even object recognition and object tracking. But also that gives quite shaky results, like you can see already in the body tracking. But it gives you the possibility for a quite cheap sensor to have all that in one sensor. And because it is basically an SDK and gives you the possibility to uh, explore and develop your own solution, it gives you quite many features in one little system. Also, it should be possible to connect multiple connects with, uh, with each other. So you don't have the tracking only from one side, but all the way around a uh, an actor. A few examples for where to use the system is, for example, when you need a very fast setup or if you just want to test something. And also when the high precision isn't needed. For example, if you want to uh, have a reactive exhibition where you just want to know if a person is near another object or is far away. And for example, you can change lightings so that it uh, fits to the exhibition or tracks even the person. Or for live applications for multiple users where the spectator can take part and just walk into the space and be part of the act. You don't want to use it if you need high precision because the system can't deliver that. And also when there is a lot of movement on the floor or if you want to turn around because it only tracks from one side. So if you stand sideways to the camera, it can't really track what's on your side, on the, on the side which is turned away from it. 
also if there are many reflections, for example, on the floor or a glass wall behind you, there are quite a lot of problems with the tracking. That's it for a short introduction to Azure Connect. different kind of mocap system is Captree, which is an image processing system which uses color cameras to track the body. And it's an outside-in tracking solution, so there are cameras mon mounted all around you. And they point towards a tracking space where they capture the color of your skin or even just your clothes. And because of that, you don't need any kind of suit or marker to put on the actor. So there is no real setup for the person who needs to be tracked and he can just walk into the space and can be tracked like he walks around normally. A few system informations first again. So there it's capable to be capturing the actor at 120 frames per second. And that's a quite fast tracking for image processing with also a quite good precision from one to 10 millimeters. And because it's image processing, the latency is quite high with only around 50 milliseconds, but you can't really get that much faster if you use videos to analyze and post-process them to capture tracking. Uh, the area is quite okay big, it's 8 by 8 meters, the setup we can build with the 12 cameras we have here. And all that is for around 30,000 euros, but there is the PC in it, the cameras, the software, so uh, it's uh, all in one package. You can track up to four persons, but it needs to be said that if you track three or four persons, the tracking gets less precise because the system has to calculate more and more persons in it and has just more work to do. To be able to track, you need to have a quite big setup because you have to mount cameras like these all around you. So we have mounted 12 cameras now and you need tripods or a good traverse to mount all of them so they are not moved because after you move them you need to calibrate them again and for that you can take a calibration board and move it around in the tracking space so each and every camera was able to see it and so it takes around five minutes to calibrate the system and Optionally, you have also good lighting like we have here, so the uh, light is very even and there are no dark spots or big shadows. That just makes the tracking easier for the system. And the background should also be quite even because it also just makes it easier for the software to determine what is the tracking body which is in the space and what is just background. And also, if there are no background changes, like if there are trees in the background which move a lot around in the wind, or a huge crowd which moves around, just gives the system more to process and to find out where is the actor and where is just the background. So now we are all set up and we can go track again. So Charlotte comes back in the space and we set up the body tracking. Like already mentioned, there's no suit or any kind of marker required. So Charlotte can just take a calibration pose and then we create a skeleton by pulling it on her and it automatically recognizes where the body parts are and for a few seconds it learns how her body is built up and then it basically is done with the calibration. Um, how the tracking works is basically by it on the calibration it creates a model which looks like these with a little uh, a many little spheres which get colorized by the by the calibration and it just takes the color of the picture and projects it on the sphere 
And afterwards, during the tracking, it always searches in the tracking images where the color is found in the image. And so the body is tracked out of that uh, with image processing by matching the color from the model it created to the camera image. Unlike the Azure Connect, which also allows markerless tracking, this one is multi-directional. So a person is tracked from multiple locations and not only from the front and can freely move around the space. Some other benefits are that the tracking does not use infrared light, which means it is not hindering other tracking systems, for example, virtual reality headsets, and can be combined with other technology to uh, even uh, to make the quality even better. Also, you automatically record video material, which you can use in the post-process uh, pipeline to see where uh, mistakes in the tracking are and how you can correct them. Uh, the biggest downside to the system are occlusions. If you, for example, move to the floor, you have a very shaky result. And for example, then when our arm is hidden, it starts to shake quite a lot. This is especially uh, noticed when you have a performance which is mainly on the floor or if there are many peoples or a lot of objects in the scene. Also, ne you need to have a good light situation. So tracking is not, only, uh, not possible in the dark. And if you have a bad or changing light setup, for example, if you want to have a blinking light. And this uh, system can also have problems if the background changes or if there are a lot of people in the background because then, then it cannot determine what is the background and what is the person which it wants to track. Because the system tracks color on an image, the tracking quality also can vary quite a lot from what you wear and what skin color you have. And it tends to uh, favor vibrant colors which have a lot of contrast and of course you always have to have a big setup with the, with, the, uh, with a system like that so you have to have all the cable runs and the camera placements on tripods or on the traverse and that already makes some tracking spaces not possible. Normally Capture can only do skeleton tracking but it's possible to manually simplify the skeleton so you can have a simplified object tracking. For example, with a ball, we can use a simplified skeleton to have it tracked in the space. And of course, there, if you use a very vibrant color with it, the tracking just gets better. And now you can see it's tracked and she can interact with the ball. But there are a few limitations on what object you can track. First of all, you have to have quite simple objects. So a ball or a cube is fine. But if they are getting too complex and are not big enough in the diameter, it cannot be tracked. So the diameter cannot really be smaller than the ball right now. A few good scenarios to use CapTree is if you want to track outside, for example, because the sun can give you a good light for capturing with CapTree. And you just have to use some tripods where you can put the cameras on and a powerful laptop, but then you can track. And also, if you want to track simple movements inside a volume with just a few persons, so two or three, so the system doesn't get too much problems with occlusion. Also, it's a, good so uh, it's a good solution if you want to have participation of, for example, someone from the crowd, because he doesn't have to put a suit on and he just can walk up and can be tracked. And you can uh, use it for simple object tracking, but that is quite limited. You shouldn't use it if you want to have big objects or very many people on the stage because then the system gets problems with occlusion. 
And also if you want to have very stable and precise tracking, for example, for a medical study, because the system is just not precise enough for that. Also, very fast and very small movements cannot be tracked precisely. So if you want to have, for example, a golf swing, which is a very fast movement, the system is not fast enough to catch that motion. And the golf bat is just too small in diameter to be tracked, so it also cannot be tracked as an object. And that was it for a short showcase of CapTree on what the system can do. Another tracking system I'm going to present is the Perception Neuron, which, which is an IMU tracking system. So it's an inside-in tracking, which means it only has relative tracking towards itself. And like you can see in the image, you have to wear straps with sensors on it. And all in all, it's a quite precise relative tracking with up to 240 frames per second and only a latency of 20 milliseconds. It's all battery operated, so the sensors last up to 5.5 hours. And the range isn't bound to a tracking area like other systems I present today, but it has the range of Wi-Fi, so it's up to 50 or even 100 meters possible. With one set, you can track one person because you buy one suit. So if you want to have another person in the tracking area, you have to buy another system. And because it is relative tracking, the position in the space in where you walk around is only estimated. Now we take a look at the software. And for that, Charlotte is again in the tracking area and we try to track her. And we take a short look at the straps and the sensors itself. You can see everywhere on the body there are straps placed and there are these little sensors which has to be, have to be placed on the straps. And they are hard plastic, so if you roll over them, they can be quite uh, unpleasant, but normally they don't really limit the motions where, what you can do. On the, uh, in the system, if we want to connect, we push one button and should connect to the sensors via Wi-Fi. And then we have to make a short calibration, which is built up out of two poses. And the first one is a quite normal neutral pose, which you have to hold for a few seconds. And the next one is a um, T pose, which is also quite typical for motion capture. Then you should get a person which is tracked. We can take a look around if all the sensors are connected and how well they are connected and also if the, there are problems with the magnetic fields around. And also we have to change the body dimension to a fitting preset. If you want to have very precise tracking you should uh, measure each and every one of the dimensions you can put in here. But just for demonstration, we just use a preset. And yeah, uh, there, are, I, or, there are again strengths and negatives for the systems. Obviously, range is a high beneficial because you don't, you aren't limited to a tracking space. You can move around quite freely. So also if she just leaves the area, she will be tracked for up to 100 meters. And there are no occlusion problems because you don't have a sensor on the outside which has to see her, but the sensors all work inertial. There is quite little uh, hardware which you have to use. There is only a Wi-Fi router and the sensors themselves. 
and it's quite moderate priced, so it is possible to get it if the budget isn't too high and there are no cables or tripods you have to set up. Also, you don't have to have the visual, so you don't have to have lights, so performances in the dark are possible. And also you can retrack the, uh, the live performance so you get an even better result in the post-processing. There are of course some weaknesses to the system because it has its limitations. For example, other Wi-Fi signals, if there are stronger signals around, the signal for the presentations are quite bad. And also one you can see here, right now she hovers over the, uh, over the floor because it is an IMU system, so there is a drift which, uh, which adds up from time to time. And if you have a long period you want to track, you have a problem because the drift gets bigger and bigger. You can get that resolved quite okay with the retrack, but maybe not everything of it. For very precise tracking, like mentioned before, you would need to measure each and every body part, because otherwise, for example, if she tries to touch the floor, the hands hover a bit like 12 centimeters over the floor, even if she really touches it. So the movements are not 100% like they are in reality. And that's also the problem because it's relative tracking, the position in space is only approximated, so it doesn't really have the information where the hand is. It only can calculate it relative to other body parts. Then we show another problem with the approximation. For that we place a chair in the tracking area. And if the feet are not on the floor, the system can't really calculate um, the best position for the feet. For example, if they are if they are stepped up like on a chair, it should work fine. But if you if you lift up the feet, like you can see soon, you can see a problem that the hips move even if she doesn't move the hips. And that's a problem you always get with relative tracking. Other functions you can use the system for is hand tracking if you buy the gloss, which are 1,500 euros. Or if you want to use the raw data of the IMU sensors, then you can, for example, place the sensor on an object and rotate it around and get the data, or even uh, react to specific motions, like you only ask the motion data of the hand and then visualize it and don't use the skeleton data but the raw data of the sensors. So the system is quite good for outdoor tracking or if you have complex movements on, a, on, on the spot, because for that uh, relative tracking is very good and also if you have uh, a lot of occlusion in the scene because the system doesn't have a problem with it, you can have other objects or other people in the scenes and the tracking doesn't mind it. You shouldn't use it if the performance is a very long one because the IMUs tend to drift so then the actor starts to hover or it isn't on the spot where you started the, uh, the performance and also the system can be quite uncomfortable. For example, if you roll, ar roll around a lot. And if the position of many people is required, you always have to get another system. So if you want to track a lot of people, then the system is also not quite good enough for it. And also there is no real object tracking when you want the position in the uh, area. So for object tracking, you can't really use it either. That's it for the perception neuron.
An example for our marker-based system is OptiTrack. It uses retroreflective markers, so you need a tracking suit to have body tracking. It is an outside-in tracking, but a very precise with a high frame rate up to 360 frames per second and up to a precision of 0.3 millimeters. The latency is also quite low with only 5 milliseconds and the area is up to the hardware you can install. With the setup we have here with 12 cameras you can get up to 8 to 8 meters but you can basically build it also up to 100 times 50 or so. It starts around 25,000, but also it depends on the setup you want to put in place. And you can track up to 24 persons at a time. Similar to Captree, you need quite a lot of hardware to put in place. First of all, you need around 10 to 12 cameras like this one to have a good and stable uh, body tracking. And also you need to have them mounted fixed on a position. So you need tripods or good traverse so they don't move after they are calibrated. To calibrate them, you have a calibration wand and you go around in the area and it has to be detected by each camera. And after about two minutes of swinging it around, you get a good calibration and can start the body tracking. For that, Charlotte comes in and we show how the tracking works. Like mentioned, you need a full body suit. And on the suit, there are markers placed on specific positions. And these are just small retroreflective markers. She can show it to the camera. And in the software, you can see these are already recognized with the orange dots. And to be able to track a person, you need to create a skeleton. So we need to make a T-pose in the middle of the scene. And then we can create one. And with that, we get the skeleton data in the program. Now she can move around freely. The tracking works by the cameras shine infrared light onto the markers and because they are reflective, they bounce the light back and they show up as a white dot on the camera image. And out of these dots with all the cameras combined, you can calculate where the small position of the marker is in space and calculate out of them a skeleton. Um, because it's a um, marker-based tracking, it can get a precision you can't really get without markers and without uh, a suit or so. So it's a very good absolute tracking and has a good processing tool uh, to even if something goes wrong, you can rework it and have a fine, good animation afterwards. You also, because it can put a lot of hardware in place, you can get big areas and have a lot of people around to have uh, a lot of people tracked at once. It also is compatible with many other softwares because it's a quite old system already and has some other features like limited finger tracking, limited face tracking, and also you can use their SDK to build your own systems with it. Uh, the delay you get is very small, so you can use it directly, the tracking for VR, and also get a high frame rate for very fast movements, like a golf swing, and all of that is very clean data you get. And also you get very good embodiment if you want to use it for VR. There are some weaknesses with the system, for example occlusion, so if the camera can't see the markers, the system don't know where the position is and 
loses, for example, the tracking of the arm or jumps around a lot, like you could see right now. And if there is reflections in the scene, like the floor is reflective or you have windows in the back, it has problems because it can't really determine if it is a marker or if it's just a reflection. And of course, you always need a full bodysuit to have body tracking, which is, it isn't too limiting on the body movement, but it can hinder and also it looks a certain way which you don't maybe want for special uh, performance. And because it is an infrared system, it can hinder some other systems like virtual reality systems or other tracking systems. Also, you have to take good care of the markers which are on the suit because you can easily misplace them if you uh, accidentally move your arm the wrong way. So you always have to have the markers in mind so you don't lose one marker on the one hand and accidentally place it on the other arm, for example. Other functions you can use the system for are, for example, the finger tracking or face tracking I mentioned earlier. Or you can have quite good object tracking, like for example this box. It's tracked around and I can, for example, throw it to Charlotte and it should be quite good possible to have the position, the rotation in the, in the area and how it moves around. Also, you have good tools for movement analysis in the software. So if you, for example, we make a short motion capture of Charlotte and she moves around. And we go to the edit view. We can take a look at how she moved in space by playing it back and for example seeing all the curves of a marker and how it moved around and also post-processing here like if there is a marker missing for a moment you can put it back in place. We, now we go live again so we have Charlotte back and get the reference view again Uh, also, you can put, uh, use the raw data from only the marker position. So if you want to have very simple tracking, you, for example, can use the SDK of the cameras and only track where is the marker in the room and don't even uh, have to use all of the software. So you can build your own uh, systems on top of it. Uh, examples for where to use the system is if you have a very good studio because you have to have all the setup which I showed earlier. Uh, so you have to have an indoor studio but if you uh, already plan to make the performance indoor and have the place for it, you get very good tracking data. If you have complex movements inside a inside a special volume with a lot of persons. It's also a quite good system for that. And also if you want to have object interactions or just object tracking. All in all, it's very good for animations which you use post-processing on. And you can get very clean data in the post-processing and use it for animations for video games or so on. And also it's so precise tracking that you can use it for uh, medical applications, for example, gait analysis and so, and have a very stable tracking. You shouldn't use it if you plan to have a lot of occlusion in the scenes, like very many peoples at once, or very big objects which can block the view of the cameras. And also outside isn't the best situation for the system because the 
sun shines with infrared light. And also when there is much reflections or there is a very limited area because you need a bit of space to put all of the system in. So that were all the tracking solutions I have prepared for you today. Of course, there are other systems too, like Qualysis, another marker-based solution, or Xsense, a more high-end IMU tracking. But I hope the four systems I showed can give you a good overview of what different kind of trackings there are. And if there are any questions, and if there is time left, my colleague Jochen Feitsch is probably able to answer them. Otherwise, you can find the informations on the websites listed on the right side, or you can easily just find them by searching with Google for the name of the tracking system. Thanks for your time, and I hope you, I was able to spark an interest in motion capture.